Hey, what is up guys? How are we doing? And welcome back to Asus Press Conference 2019, where we're looking at monitors. You know, it's my favorite thing to talk about. And there's quite a lot of interesting stuff here, actually. The first one is probably the one most of us are going to be interested in, because it's 43 inches, 144 hertz, it's 4K, but it also uses HDR1000, so pretty much the full spec sheet. There are plenty of people that want a large format display. I think I, I sometimes almost forget that I am not the same as everyone else because I use my monitor I guess in the more standard way which is for Windows, web browsing, a little bit of gaming and some work. But plenty of people that want a gaming display are actually way more interested in the gaming side of it. So they maybe play things like The Witcher 3 with a controller but also maybe Apex Legends with a mouse and keyboard. Something like this could be absolutely fantastic and the perfect thing for you because it's got adaptive sync so even if you can't drive 4K at 144 hertz you can use G-Sync or FreeSync to actually get this going and reduce the stutter and tearing in your games but because it's so big you can of course lean back and use a controller but because it's so responsive you can use it with a mouse and keyboard and not be at any real disadvantage I'm gonna be very interested to see what the display lag is like because it's not got a G-Sync panel inside which means it doesn't actually have the G-Sync chip that is known for its low input lag so we're gonna to have to hope that the scaler that's inside is actually gonna be very low input lag you would like to think so as it's a gaming display I'm not entirely sure whether this will come to the final sample because because everything here are first gen engineering units, but it's got an absolutely ridiculous amount of ports. I mean, how many PlayStations and Xboxes do they think people have? Because they've got two HDMIs on the right, and then another one, I think, underneath, as well as display ports. You can use this for like your Sky TV box, Dish. I think that's a thing in the US, I don't really know. As well as your games consoles, and as well as your PC. So if you want the ultimate 43 inch monitor, this is probably it. Pricing, I don't think is yet announced. If it is, it'll be down below. So running over from the monitor in the background, unfortunately the production values today are not what they could be. I only have myself, this is a tripod. Sadly, my cameraman Gareth has turned into a tripod. It's very, very sad times, very, very sad times. But they have a whole new range of monitors here at Acer. That's right, we can get back on topic. Concept D. If you've heard of this, it's very, very new. It's one of the things they actually unveiled at the press conference. So if you think Acer currently has gaming brands like Nitro and Predator, Concept D is basically the same sort of thing, but for creatives. So the design language is very different, but we've also got the specs that back it up and are fantastic for things like rendering, video editing, photo, all of the creative work. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that the base of this is actually made out of wood, which is an entirely new direction for monitor materials. Maybe that's what the D stands for in Concept D, but I guess we will never know. I really like it though. I think a lot of other people may well start copying this if they are going for this whole sort of studio design. Because at the moment, this is clearly something that will stand out to a lot of people and they will think this is the monitor for me. But the rest of the stand works pretty much as you'd expect. There's no real compromise here that I can see at all. Maybe cable management will be lacking a little bit, but we've got up, down, tilt, pivot, pretty much the full works, everything you would need. And if you don't like it, you can swap it out for a Visa stand. But we've got three different models of this at the moment, and they're pretty much the same as the Nitro and Predator gaming displays that we have over on the gaming side, which means that the top spec is 4K, 144Hz G-Sync Ultimate. Yes, a monitor that is made out of wood has G-Sync Ultimate. You heard it here first. Very, very impressive stuff. Obviously, it's more for people that have a HDR workflow because they would have had to previously buy the X27, which screamed gaming and wouldn't really fit into the sort of space that you'd probably expect people to work in that want that sort of thing. But then we've also got the non-HDR version of that or the one that has HDR 400. So that is 4K, 144 hertz, but only has HDR 400 with no full array local dimming. And there's also a quad HD version, which I will have to double check, but I think is also 144 hertz. I would have thought that 60 hertz probably would have made a little bit more sense because obviously it's not a gaming display, so most people that buy this probably won't use it. But I'm assuming that this is because they're using the panels that are in the gaming displays, they're carrying them over, which then in turn lowers down the cost. So I guess it's not really too much of a concern in that regards. But the main reason you would go for one of these, other than the design language when compared to the gaming displays, is because they're a little bit more color accurate. Not in terms of what they can actually output, because the readings in terms of Adobe RGB, DCI-P3, 
um, all of that good stuff. I think it's going to be the same because they are the same panels, but these ones are actually Pantone validated. So the image you're seeing on screen really should be super accurate to what you're actually going to get in the content that you're making because there's nothing worse if you're a content creator than grading something or editing it for print and then finding that it's not actually uh, what comes out at the end of the pipeline. That's very frustrating. Even I know a little bit about that and my experience in that regard, I guess, is very, very limited. And there is actually one other monitor announcement that I've just realized I've completely forgotten to actually put in here because it's not present. They're not showing it off today, but it is micro LED. And this is really interesting technology. And I think I'm actually gonna do a new video just about the text so people can fully understand if you like what it's all about because it has really, really small dimming zones in the backlight of the monitor. That's what it is, it's a micro LED backlight. And the benefit of this is it's gonna give you not quite OLED level blacks, but very, very close because you have small LEDs that can shut off for blacks. But because you've actually got the LEDs in there, you're getting a much brighter white than you'd find on an OLED monitor. So you combine the two things together and you get better blacks, better brights, and you have ideally a monitor that can handle pretty much everything and give you a fantastic HDR experience. So these are the monitors at Asus Press Conference 2019. Which one is your favorite? Which one do you want in your gaming setup? Are you a fan of the whole wood design aesthetic? Or would you rather have something with a lot more RGB? Really interested to hear your thoughts as always. Do you want the 43 incher? Do you want wood? I don't know, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But either way, please hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. It helps out so, so much. You really wouldn't believe if you can do that, I would really, really appreciate it. And of course, get subscribed for the full reviews of all of these monitors, as well as the rest of the coverage here from Acer 2019. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Acer for paying for travel and accommodation to actually get me here. And I'll see you in the next one.